Good evening, ladies and gents. You're probably wondering, where is J-Mac? J-Mac has a little bit of business to attend to, so you will see J-Mac back on the show tomorrow when we go live with our paranormal partner. We'll be talking about the A75, the most haunted road in Scotland. Uh, but fear not, J-Mac will still be on this episode as we've got uh, an interview to play today, which is the reason we're doing the, ep the episode today, uh, the Chopper 20th anniversary, when when I actually kind of, when I looked on a bit of research for Chopper, the movie, and we got given the opportunity to speak to the director, Andrew Dominic, I was like, all right, so that's 20 years of Chopper. And I'd read the email. Maybe I'd read it wrong because 20 years of Chopper was like two years ago. And uh, I was like, right. So I'd done all the graphics and stuff for this episode and was like, so if 20 years of Chopper was, you know, it came out in 2000. So 20 years was like 2020, not 2022. And there's a part in this interview where Andrew Dominic looks at me as I'm saying, you know, it's been 20 years, isn't it? And how do you feel the legacy of your shows, been, of your movies been going on? And he's looking at me, he's like, yeah. And I kind of wondered why that was. And then I realized it was that. So look out for that in this upcoming interview. The interview lasts about half an hour. Um, and we're very, very thankful to Andrew Dominic for giving us that time. It was brilliant. The guy is, uh, well, I'll just say this. We've had no one like him on the show before. Um, so you're in for a treat. Absolutely. For those of you that have forgotten about Chopper, not that you should have, because once you see that once, you know something you're going to forget. But for those of you that need a little refresher, here is the trailer for the movie Chopper. You've probably read all the newspaper stories about me. Australia's most evil. And you've heard the, the, the word on the street about me. Do I look like Mother Teresa to you? And you've got a picture in your head of what, of what bloody Chopper reads like. Good, he seems to have done himself a mischief. And you're sitting here at this bar, all very nice and cosy, and I'm a bit of a bloody letdown to you. <laughs> You have a history of violent behaviour. This is bloody Chopper Reed. Now I can't even get arrested in this fucking town. 20 seconds to produce some cash or I'll fucking shoot you. There's no cash here. Here, there's no cash. Who says crime doesn't pay? <laughs> <laughs> Crime, eh? <laughs> you're fucking sick, Reed. You're insane. Beethoven had his critics too, Keith. See if you can name three of them. Starry skies above. Don't fence me in. Brilliant movie. It was great to revisit that with J Mac recently when we got to see the new and improved. Uh, it's a new cut that comes out tomorrow on the twenty fifth. So make sure that if you're in a, if you're near a cinema that you can go and see it, then do so. Or you can check it out on most streaming platforms as of tomorrow. So if you do, go ahead and check that out and let us know what you think about it. Uh, you can contact us at jibberjabberspodcast.com or you can go to jibberjabberscotland at gmail.com and just let us know what you thought of it. It'd be pretty cool. Bef just before I play this uh this here interview with Andrew Dominic. I uh, just want to say a big thanks to the Daily Record for uh, featuring us in the West Lothian Courier and on their website about our episode last week with Billy Bob Thornton and JD Andrew of the Boxmasters. It's been very well received and we thank you guys and all the guests that come on the show and make it exactly what it is. So without further ado, ladies and gents, here is our interview with Andrew Dominic about his movie chopper joining us today is andrew dominic uh here on the jibber jabber podcast uh in celebration of chopper 
28 years as of the 25th of March. It'll be out on uh, digital and we can see it finally in the cinema. Uh, well, for us anyway, because I came out 20 <laughs> years ago, so you can imagine what age I was then. Uh, but 20 years of Chopper, for, for you, this, this I imagine to be your baby. This is as your, your prints all over it. What was it like for you 20 years on to look back and see just how well Chopper has done? Uh, it, it, it's nice, mate. You know, it's it feels like it stood the test of time. <laughs> it definitely I has. I mean, yeah. we um, uh, just watched it again recently. <laughs> he, uh, Kevin, is I think thirty. Thirty. Uh, yes, I was ten when it came out. And I'm yeah, uh, the perfect the, right. age to see Chopper. I think. <laughs> 10 years old, right? Do you know what's yeah, funny absolutely. though? As I was watching it, I think as a ten-year-old. I would relate a lot to Mark Reed's character because there's a totally. very vulnerable, childlike totally. character yeah. there. Even though, yeah. like, take away like, the yeah. I mean, I wouldn't. I would never show it to my ten year old. But <laughs> you can, you can kind right. of, okay. you know, you, you get that. You get the, the. He does have a a real childlike vulnerability to him, like mm -hmm. like Kevin said. Um, I mean, you. I mean, this was this was obviously done. Uh, it was released in two thousand. Um, um, now. <sighs> How do you do? You think things have changed now? Do you think Chopper is a film that you could make today and still get away with the stuff that's in it, or do you think? It, oh, I mean, I think <laughs> I think people that have problems with him beating up his girlfriend, and <laughs> you know, uh, I, I can't. I mean, you know, Chopper's a full catalogue of like, um, he's you know, unwokeness, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's not woke. I mean, you'd love to think you'd get away with it today, don't you? Oh, absolutely. You'd love to think it. He's the, um, he's the antidote, isn't he? The antidote for what's going on in the world today. Perfect. Uh, he, perfect. He's a he's a little bit of mix of everything, isn't he? Um, yeah. Was it? It's like, was it like that? Good that I... is, good is the new evil in today's yeah. world. I think. Yeah. yeah I feel like a... I feel like the forces of good are actually the forces of evil. Yeah, it's, it's a guy. Those who purport to be. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Um, was what was it that attracted you to Mark Reed's story? Um, was it did you read his book or can I? Yeah, I read his book. Australia? I read his book. Mm -hmm. I mean, his book was you know it's the most shoplifted book in Australian public history, <laughs> and it, it had just come out around that time. You know, everyone was reading. Everyone in my sort of you know social circle was reading Chopper. You know, mm -hmm. um, and I read it too, and it was funny, mate. You know <laughs> that that was the main sort of that was the initial impulse you know and it just yeah. seemed like a kind of kind of a movie that could get made in those yeah. days you know what i mean mm, i yeah. don't think they would have been too worried about like well actually it wasn't actually easy to get made in the end but um mainly because of stuff that mark did you know he could mm. get out of jail just when we're about to get funding and he'd go on a tv show and he was sort of like get really drunk he'd drink the green room dry <laughs> <laughs> and then he starts Telling funny stories about stuffing victims into cement mixes and flirting with, with the horror. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, that, that kind of stuff. And then the you know, film Victoria would pull out of funding the next day. Oh, that kind no. of thing, you know. Yeah. Uh, Mark. Do you do you <laughs> think I mean can't can't take him anywhere, mate? <laughs> he said uh, on I know it's in many different interviews and stuff. He says that when the cameras are on, he just kinda embellishes stuff. Do you believe that a lot of the stuff they said were just kinda maybe stories that kind of almost happened and yeah. became something or do you think most of what he says pretty much was what the, the deal was but he was just trying to kind of sweep it under the rug by going ah, i'm just i'm just kidding you <laughs> no 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 mark I, I think he appropriated a lot of famous criminal stories i yeah. mean I, I think a lot of the stories were true he just wasn't there you know <laughs> um and he, he put himself in the center of them i mean he claims to have killed 17 people i, I think he killed I mean, when I knew him, I think he'd only killed two people. Um, only two. But, <laughs> yeah, only two. I mean, you know, um, one was a guy in jail uh, who probably deserved it, and and uh, one was uh, Sammy the Turk who probably didn't. Uh, um, <laughs> but then, um, you know, just before he died, he confessed to killing Sid Collins, um, mm. who was the guy uh, who he went to jail for attempting to murder. Um, yeah. uh, but, but his last jail sentence was basically attempting to murder that guy, which he actually, his defense in court was, I'm a professional killer. 
If I attempted to murder somebody, they'd be dead. This is a fucking insult. There's no oh, way man. I can attempt to murder. I, I can't be guilty of attempted murder. The first jury was hung. Oh, they man. They had to do another trial because it sounded like a reasonable explanation. I mean, the first jury couldn't agree. At least half of them said he's, you know, innocent. Oh, no. uh, but anyway, he, he went to jail based on that guy's evidence. So when he got out of jail, uh, he killed the guy. Which, ah. you know, in, from an Australian perspective, is fair enough. The guy was a dog, right? From yeah. In jail, you know. Yeah. I mean, the guy was a criminal. He didn't obey the criminal code and he ended up dead. I mean... <laughs> Simple as, huh? Simple as. <laughs> Fair enough. This is Fair fun. Enough. Okay. <laughs> One of the funniest <laughs> scenes for me in the movie was uh, was the court scene where he's talking yeah. and uh, oh, and he's talking about giving okay, him the suit okay. and stuff like you that. Know that scene is directly uh-huh. from the that's directly out of the court transcript. Oh the, no brilliant. way! <laughs> it is directly from the court transcript. <laughs> And, uh, uh, super. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> and Eric Banner plays uh, from looking at what what we've seen interviews with the real Mark Reed and Eric Banner, like unbelievable. Yeah. I heard that uh, that it was actually Mark Reed that had suggested to you. Yes. To maybe is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah. 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 It is. I mean, it didn't sound sound like a good idea at the time, but um, ah. uh, uh, I mean, it just embodies it perfectly. I mean, I'd actually, yeah. I, I said to Kevin that he's, he's actually. He's terrifying. Like if I saw him walking at a pub, I would leave. You know, but you, you don't get you don't get that from you know, Eric Banner and a lot of other things. He looks like yeah. this kind of this sweet guy. I know he's played some dodgy characters, but he looks like a, a nice guy. But in this, Christ, man, he's like the Antichrist. Um, you know what's funny? You know what's funny? Whenever we go to film festivals and shit, there'd always be like 15 people or so that would get up and walk out. You know, like every time you are stabbing. <laughs> right. So, uh, you know, a whole lot of people get up and walk out. We used to stick Eric by the door. Right yeah. by the door of the theatre. So as they were walking out, they would run into what they were running away from. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's incredible. When pretty, I when that, I that was pretty good. Oh yeah, I yeah. put it on for my wife, and uh, I was like, "There's Eric Banner's in this." She was like, "Because she had never seen it before." She was like, oh, "Okay, Eric Banner was he not in?" And she had mentioned a chick flick, right? And I was like, "Yeah, yeah." And she's like, "Of course." <laughs> I know him from that, and of course you know him from something like this. <laughs> right. Uh, I think the, what, the, the, what the, uh, the whole... Sorry. Mm-hmm. What did the wife think? Ah, she enjoyed it. She's it's not. She's more of a chick flick kind of person. Uh, um, yeah. She she didn't laugh at certain things I laughed at. Like, for example, where he goes into his girlfriend's house, and then mom's like, oh, no. He's like, don't worry, I'm not going to hurt her, and just grabs her by the skirt. Of the skirt. I'm like, I found that really funny. She's funny. just like, yeah. oh my god, that would be horrible. But me, I'm like, yeah. that's brilliant. There's comedy in that. Obviously, yeah, yeah. no totally. one. <laughs> it's tragedy and comedy in the same frame. I mean, to to literally beat the crap out of his girlfriend and then say, "Now nah, look what you did. You, your mum's upset." You're like, what? <laughs> what you blaming twisted, it on her. twisted man. Um, mm-hmm. the, the, the I mean, Eric Banner was primarily a, a comedy actor before that yeah and he was he did the the sketch show and it, i think I, i've seen i didn't grow up in australia so i didn't see it until mm-hmm. way later on in life but the the character of uh Poira, um mm-hmm. is, Poira. is just yeah. Poira. Yeah. he's like yeah it's not oh, peter yeah. it's Poira. <laughs> yeah yeah it's, yeah. it's brilliant man and just mm-hmm. to look at that and then look at chopper you go how the hell mm-hmm. did that happen and yeah. obviously mark reed is the one that made it happen essentially mm-hmm. by suggesting well he him. saw it he saw it i mean you know, we were scraping the bottom of the barrel by that point. You know what I mean? We must have seen three or four hundred actors, wow. um, uh, and we sort of despaired of there ever being someone who could actually play the part. You know, mm-hmm. um, uh, <coughs> but you know, Eric, he, he did a screen test, and it was really, um, it was good. It was just a little big. You know what yeah. I mean? It was a bit, a bit like the TV show that he was doing, and uh, I just went and spent a day with him and see if he could tone it down a bit. You know, and he could. Yeah. 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 How much time? Did, how much time did you spend with Mark? Uh, I mean, I spent a day with I spent a day with him in Dale in Risden. Um, that's when I first met him. It took like five years to meet the guy. I used to write letters to him and get letters back. Mm-hmm. Um, and I spent a day with him in jail. And then Eric and I spent a weekend with him in Tasmania, um, which was pretty stressful. And. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so he, he makes you feel like he's doing you a favor by not killing you. 
Uh, and, then, and then I remember as soon as we got on the plane, Eric and I got on the plane. I think Mark took us to the airport. I think we fell asleep. Like the adrenaline just, you know, crashed. Yeah. And, uh, I slept for three days after that. Sure. I'm not. I'm not even surprised. Yeah, and then you know, over the years, um, over the years, you know, I've seen him a few times, kind of thing. I mean, I love Mark. I mean, I love Mark. You know, yeah. I really. I spent a lot of time thinking about him. The movie's made with love. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, he's definitely um, impulsive in a scary way as, as a person, you know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that definitely shows. But, uh, yeah, but, you know, I mean, I think that Mark, you know, Mark has a pretty good sense of, like, you know, where the boundaries are. Do you know what I mean? Mm. Like, he doesn't he, – he, he hurts, you know – most of his victims died of natural causes in that they were sort of natural to the line of work they chose. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, he, he, didn't, um, he didn't do it. You know, he, he didn't... Uh, he drew the line at civilians. You know, I mean, I just yeah. look like some airy, fairy, fucking cappuccino drinking wanker. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he was, you know... Um, yeah. Just some like private school boy kind of thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, you you do see that in the movie because there's for me the tone changed when he goes into Jimmy's house years later and he's got a wee girl there. And for me, I'm like, oh, for in movies that always gets me when there's kids about to see something because you expect <laughs> Chopper's going to do him right there with his pregnant missus and his daughter. But then you see that in Chopper that he's like, nah. I, and I think uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think he kind of held back on killing him because. He saw that he had a family and they had this child and then kind of just left, let it be. And he doesn't actually kill him in the movie. I wonder if he got it in real life. No, <laughs> no, no. Um, I mean, I think, I think Mark is the kind of person that uh, once the worst happens, he can relax. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I think that if you, if you hurt Mark, it's sort of, uh, it's not as dangerous as him hurting you. <clears throat> do, you know what, do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, don't make me feel bad about what I did. Are you trying to make me feel bad about what I did? I'm going to fucking yeah. hurt. You, you know what I mean? That's, that's the kind of mentality. But I think if yeah. you hurt him, um, he's kind of expecting it somehow, you know, yeah. in a way. Yeah. And, uh, and, and he can sort of let it go. Mm. I don't, was, I, I don't, I, I'm sure like he's not going to, you know, kill Jimmy in front of his wife and child, but, but <laughs> I, I'm not sure that it's the wife and child that stop him. You know, right? Yeah, hmm. I, th I yeah. think he actually likes Jimmy, and he doesn't was... hold it against him. I mean, I can't tell you yeah. the amount of times you know, like you'll go to a jail. I'm going to spend a bit of time in jail, like mm -hmm. not as an inmate, but as a <laughs> right. Yeah. And the amount, amount of times some guy would like lift up his shirt and show you some horrific scar where he'd been like, you know, open from like you know, navel to chest kind of thing oh, by a knife, and you'd say, "Who did it to you? Wow, how'd that happen?" And the guy sitting next to him be like, "Well, mate, you know, we, I did." It. <laughs> <laughs> and, they're still, and they're still like best buddies. You know, <laughs> I mean, it didn't happen all the time, but it happened at least once, uh, one yeah. other time. I saw. You do, you do see him forgiving mm. him, almost like when when uh, Jimmy's stabbing him right at the start. He is almost like kind of. You can see he's almost kind of forgiving him as it's happening. You know, you know yeah, watch well, it. You might kill me. I mean. Yeah, I mean that comes that. that also comes directly from the sort of arrest uh, report of the time. Mm. You know, it's like from the hand up brief where you read the description of what happened, and it really was fucking weird, dude. You know, mm. <laughs> what what a life, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got a a question here that was asked by one of our listeners, uh, Brian. Um, he said, uh, "How much?" Uh, did you need to blend fact or Mark Reed's version of fact with fiction to make the biopic work in the big screen? And do you think that helped the audience warm to Chopper as a, a likable criminal? Well, um, I mean, most of the incidents that happen in the film are true. Do you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Um, and a lot of them, you know, shit like dialogue and everything just comes from, you know, arrest reports and statements and all that sort of stuff. I mean, a lot of it's like that. Um, uh, but but the people are different, you know. Yeah. Like in them are different, you know. I kind of um, I approach the film from the point of view of trying to understand his behaviour. I mean, it doesn't really have a plot, so I mean, you're not really going to be changing the story to kind of suit dramatic purposes because there's no drama mm -hmm. in the film other than 
what the fuck's Mark going to do? You know, <laughs> go either way, you know, in any, any kind of situation. Yeah. Um, I mean, there is a sort of story to it, but it's not really a, you wouldn't call it a plot driven film. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I never even thought about that. <laughs> you don't, you don't yeah. notice it when you're watching it. It feels like there's a story and a plot, but maybe there mm-hmm. isn't. No, no. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm not big on plot. I, I, I find plot pretty boring. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to hear about the bag of money or the MacGuffin or, the, you know, you know, yeah. how many seconds we got to take the, you know, get through the alarms. And I mean, who fucking cares, mate? I mean, that, that was, <laughs> bores the shit out of me. And, I and, totally get that, man. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like heist movies, mate. The worst. The fucking worst. <laughs> um, yeah, so that, that, you know, I mean, I want to watch a movie. I don't want to see the scenes. Do you know what I mean? I don't mm. want to feel the scene. I just want to be like, what the, whoa, what's, you know. Um, yeah. And I think Chopper's like that, you know. Like, it certainly was back in the day. You know, mm. you, could, you could feel like the, the moment where the audience really felt uh, destabilised is when he turns around and apologises after he stabs Keithy, you know. And mm-hmm. you could really <laughs> feel like they don't, whoa, what's going on here? Like, that's yeah. not normal. Um, yeah. And, and that's that, that stabbing on, scene. I had them. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's brutal. I mean, it, it kind of it, it really knocks you off your feet when when you first see the stabbing, and then and then the yeah. tone, like you said, the tone just changes on a on a dime. Yeah. He's like, ah, I'm yeah, sorry, yeah. mate. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. I've never seen that before ever. No. My, no. my wife goes, what, "Why did he do that?" And I went, "Because he was being cheeky." And she's like. <laughs> 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 Right. For me, that that's that's my kind of movie. I like something so unpredictable, and uh, yeah. as well, you can just tell that it's, it's it's coming from the character is clearly a real guy because no one's going to write a character, or at least I've not seen a character written like that. That's like that's that's fiction. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, <laughs> you really don't you don't get a lot. Of, some of the best characters are just either oh, a, a real man. person, yeah, turned up to twelve. Or just that larger than life person like Chopper Mark, himself. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. I yeah. think that's why his kind of legacy will last forever. Um, for you, twenty years on, how is what has it felt like for having Chopper twenty years out there? Has it been one of your prized possessions from some of the great movies that you've I made? I mean, uh, to, to be, depending. Uh, to be honest with you, haven't even thought about. It. You, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, yeah. Ba- you know, basically, you um. I mean, I spent seven years thinking about it, right? Like yeah, every yeah. day, you know. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, the film's made and it's out, and it's like, okay. And then you never think about it again. Not really. Um, mm. It's weird, mate. It's a bit weird. But 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 you know, it was good to go back and see it because uh, I had to grade it. You know, I had to regrade yeah. it for for DCP and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, it's good to go back and see it. But I haven't actually sat down and watched Chopper. Uh, yeah, I mean, 20 years, maybe 15 wow, years. Yeah, you, uh, I mean, uh, I, I watched it when it went through the grading, but only in mm-hmm. films, you know. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, I watched the whole thing actually, but but you know, I wasn't watching it as like, uh, yeah, you weren't sitting down to watch the movie, you no, were no, fixing it, no, you were, no, yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> um. It's, it's speaking of the grading, I mean, the, the look of the film is still very unique to this day. I mean, mm-hmm. the, the color, the color changes depending on what's going on in the scene and stuff like that. Um, like you, you see, it goes from kind of it goes greens. You've got greens, blues, and and your kind of warm colors. All, all. I mean, the warm colors are used when there's horrific stuff going on as well. It's everything is just everything's there just to make you feel like you're in another world that's what it felt like to me anyway when i was when i was watching it right um, right. but that's just me sometimes i'm stupid <laughs> no 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 i mean there's an idea of this to make jail seem sort of like you know mm-hmm. safe um like i'm very it's always the same color kind of thing you know like mm-hmm. uh because he feels safe there uh and then the outside world just is overwhelming you know because obviously yeah. mark mark can't really cope with i mean at that point in his life he couldn't really cope with being out of jail um, yeah. Uh, so it was deliberate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a, it's one that definitely still gets talked about. It's something that I've heard last ten, ten or more so years for me growing up and being getting right into movies and stuff. It's one that 
people had always talked about especially it's, there's a select amount of movies that your friends always say you need to check that out and it's not something that that uh marvel or disney are throwing down your throat and uh chopper <laughs> definitely is that that everybody must go and watch um so it will be out on uh digital and in the cinemas again on the 25th uh, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on here andrew um thank you uh, um, hey another 20 years and it'll be the 40th anniversary maybe we'll do this again 40 <laughs> Yeah, I'll probably be dead, mate. I'll be like, I'll be, I'll be like Joe Biden, up like an anim animatronic puppet. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Hey, we've never interviewed an animatronic puppet yet, so there's yeah, always yeah, I mean, time. I mean, mate, 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 you can just digitally age up the video of me here. <laughs> 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 anything is possible in today's age right. absolutely again thanks for that mate it's been an Thank absolute you. pleasure and uh, thanks, all the guys. best mate. all fun. the best buddy thanks again take it easy bye you see you mate bye bye bye, bye. and there we have it the uh, amazing andrew dominic the guy was uh he was a uh, he's a wee bit more uh more of a a real character to have on the show th than we have previously. I'm just going to read a couple of these comments before we wind down here. Smart Duck says, the scene with him and his dad was funny. Mate, the scene with him and everybody in that movie was funny. Uh, it's a crazy movie. If you have not seen Chopper, definitely go and check it out. If you live in an area that are showing it, uh, it will be available throughout the UK and select cinemas so go ahead and check it out there if you can imagine seeing that in the cinema or you can go ahead and get it on demand it'll be everywhere sky prime all the places that you consume your digital media i got another comment here from carhalock one is the paranormal <laughs> paranormal part next yes the paranormal part will be live tomorrow at nine uh, we're really looking forward to that that will be on the a75 which happens to be the most haunted road in scotland uh, so many different things happen there but i don't want to give too much away we'll chat about that tomorrow uh, if anybody's had any experiences on the a75 please do write in and tell us before we go live tomorrow uh, but i'm really really looking forward to the next episode of the paranormal pattern so thank you carolock uh, smart duck says true absolutely and so if you do get a chance to go ahead <coughs> pardon me and watch chopper make sure to do so because it's just a complete laugh from start to finish uh it was a love letter almost from andrew dominic to the man himself mark chopper raid and uh yeah it's, we're, we're really humbled to have had the chance to speak to andrew dominic Make sure to keep your eye on this show. If you haven't subscribed or all that cool stuff, make sure to do so. Because as you see from that there, that that interview and the one previously with Billy Bob Thornton and JD Andrew, not all the time do we get the chance to go live with our guests. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But that's all down to whether or not they're willing to do it. And we find the bigger the guest, the less willing they are to go live. I don't know why it is. I think it's maybe a vulnerable like a vulnerability kind of thing um and if they don't know us they don't know that we'll actually look after them and make sure that everything is the way it should be to make it comfortable uh, so in that case if you subscribe and you follow us on social media we'll always tell you in advance this person's coming on the show and if we can't deliver that live we do always go ahead and take your questions and ask them and give you the credit for it as well uh, and we will be having some more really cool guests coming up soon look out for live shows uh, all the paranormal stuff we've got our, uh, got our hands in some pies so to speak so make sure to to definitely do that um carolock says thank you i will be there we look forward to seeing you i think it's janice um we look forward to seeing you it'll be class it'll be brilliant and makes sense absolutely so i'm going to wind down this show here if you're listening on spotify google podcasts or anywhere else audible and all the cool places that you consume your podcast make sure to check us out live go and check us out on youtube because you get to see this show this show is a visual show and we've usually got really cool stuff for you to see. So do so. And if you fancy listening to us on the go, you can check us out everywhere from Spotify, Google Podcasts, absolutely everywhere. I knew it was Janice. I knew it. Uh, so make sure to check us out there. Keep an eye on what we're doing. This is going to be the year for Jibber Jabber Podcast and the Paranormal Patter and everything we do. So I'm looking forward to doing that with you guys. And have a great night. And we will see you guys tomorrow. Take it easy, guys.